Pratima from Planet Physiology. In this video, we shall have a brief overview on properties of skeletal muscle. We shall discuss electrical and mechanical properties with respect to their definitions, causes and significance. Skeletal muscle exhibits various properties like excitability, conductivity, contractility, refractory period, all or none law, summation, tetanus and fatigue. Knowledge about these properties helps us to understand the principles behind recording and interpreting EMG that is electromyogram. So let us start with the excitability. It is defined as ability of a tissue to respond to an adequate stimulus. It depends on two factors strength and duration of the stimulus. The relationship between the strength and duration of the stimulus is indicated in this graph. Shown in red color is the relationship for the nerve and in green color is for the skeletal muscle. And this graph is called as strength duration curve or SD curve. So let us study the components of this strength duration curve. The first component is Rio Bells. It is the minimum strength of the current required to elicit the response from the tissue. We have to give adequate time for the stimulus to act. As indicated by this dotted line, this is the strength required to elicit response from the nerve. So this is the Rio basic current for the nerve. In the same way, this is the Rio basic current for the muscle. So any strength before this was not able to elicit response from the tissue, but at Rio basic strength, tissue showed response. The next component in this strength duration curve is utilization time. It is the minimum time required or taken up by the tissue to elicit the response when the strength is Rio basic. X axis is the time interval. So this is the time interval taken by the nerve to show the response when the stimulus is Rio basic. Similarly shown in this green dotted line is the utilization time for the skeletal muscle. The third and the most important component of this strength duration curve is chronaxi. It is defined as minimum time required by the tissue to elicit response when the strength of the stimulus is double the Rio base. So let us understand with the help of diagram. So this is the Rio basic current required to elicit the response. Now we double this current. So this is the twice the Rio base current. And when twice the Rio base current is applied, response is given quickly. So this time interval in which response is elicited is called as chronaxi. So this is the duration for the nerve or chronaxi for the nerve and this is the chronaxi for the skeletal muscle. Chronaxi is the standard for excitability and there is inverse relationship between chronaxi and excitability of the tissue. Lesser the chronaxi more is the excitability. So from this graph we can conclude that nerve has less chronaxi than muscle and hence we say that nerve is more excitable than muscle. Now coming to the second property conductivity. It is ability of a tissue to conduct impulses. To understand this here is a picture. This represents sarcolemma. This is the motor nerve and this is the neuromuscular junction. When signals arrive at neuromuscular junction from the motor nerve, it initiates impulse generation at motor end plate which travels on either side of the muscle as well as deeper into the muscle via T tubule system. Thus, skeletal muscle has ability to conduct impulses. Excitability and conductivity are the electrical properties of the muscle. Now coming to the mechanical properties of the muscle, first we will study contractility. It is defined as ability of tissue to respond to the adequate stimulation in the form of contraction. As skeletal muscles are voluntary in nature, they will contract only in response to the impulse. When a single stimulus is provided to the motor nerve, muscle contracts once. This single muscle contraction is called as muscle twitch and it can be recorded in the form of curve 
which is called as simple muscle curve. Now let us understand the components of the simple muscle curve. First line indicates the time at which stimulus is provided to the nerve. So this is point of stimulation. After a certain time interval, muscle begins to respond. So this is the line indicating beginning of the response. The time interval between the point of stimulus and beginning of the response is called as latent period. Once muscle begins to show response, the response gradually increases and attains a peak or summit. So the time duration between beginning of the response till the summit is termed as contraction period and after the peak muscle begins to relax. The point at which response ends is indicated by this line and this entire duration from summit till the end of the response is called as relaxation period. Knowledge of each component of this simple muscle curve is essential to understand next properties of the muscle. Now coming to the important property of the muscle called as refractory period. It is defined as time interval in which muscle fails to elicit response to the second adequate stimulus. It means that if the muscle is stimulated immediately followed by the first stimulus, it will not respond. Depending upon the strength of the second stimulus, we can divide refractory period into two obsolete and relative. In obsolete refractory period, whatever is the strength of the second stimulus, it will not elicit response from the muscle. Whereas in case of relative refractory period, a stronger second stimulus can elicit response from the muscle. Let us understand this concept with the help of this graph. Now here is the application of the first stimulus and muscle has started to show the response. Muscle has completed its contraction and it has begun to relax. Now during the phase of relaxation, a second stimulus is applied and we find that muscle has responded to the second stimulus in the form of next contraction. This indicates that the second stimulus has elicited response from this already stimulated muscle. So this relaxation phase of the muscle is not refractory because application of stimulus during relaxation has elicited response. Now if we try the second stimulus in various phases of muscle twitch, we can find out which phase of the muscle contraction is refractory. If the second stimulus is applied during latent period, muscle will not respond to this stimulus. Muscle will show only a single curve indicating that it has responded only to the first one and not to the second one. So in case of skeletal muscle, latent period is refractory period. In this also, the first half of the latent period is absolute refractory and second half of the latent period is relative refractory. It means if a stronger second stimulus is applied during second half of the latent period, muscle will show response to it. The molecular mechanism for this refractory period is inactivation of voltage gated sodium channels. Now in case of skeletal muscle, action potential is spike potential and for every action potential, the entire depolarization and the initial one third of repolarization is refractory. The spike potential occupies latent period and hence latent period is refractory in case of skeletal muscle. If we compare this property with cardiac muscle, we will find that cardiac muscle shows plateau potential and hence the phase of depolarization lasts for longer duration and therefore refractory period also lasts for longer duration and hence in case of cardiac muscle, this property is known as long refractory period. Because of this difference in the duration of refractory period, skeletal muscle will show certain properties which will not be seen in case of cardiac muscle that we will see later. Now coming to the next property, all or none law. In case of skeletal muscle, all or none law is obeyed by motor units or it is applicable to motor units. It means that when the threshold stimulus is applied, all the muscle fibers in that particular motor unit will contract to their maximum 
if the stimulus applied is sub threshold no muscle fibers in that motor unit will contract at all so this is all or none law property now let us understand what is this motor unit all the muscle fibers innervated by a single motor neuron constitutes motor unit this is a motor neuron innervating this three muscle fibers so this entire structure constitutes a motor unit in any given muscle there are many motor units so let us understand again with the help of diagram this is one motor unit so whenever adequate stimulus is given to this motor neuron all these muscle fibers will contract but this adequate stimulus may not be sufficient to elicit contractions in the other muscle fibers innervated by other motor neuron this red color motor nerve along with its muscle fibers constitute second motor unit when a stronger stimulus is given the second motor unit also will be excited so in response to the stronger stimulus the first as well as second motor unit will respond all these muscle fibers will contract to their maximum and as a result force generated by the muscle will be stronger and because collateral muscle obeys all or none law property for motor unit we can obtain gradations in the response given by the muscle as per the need of the body let us understand with the example suppose you want to lift a pen from the desk you need very small force to be generated and as a result just adequate stimulus will be provided to the muscle to perform this action now from the desk instead of pen if we want to lift a book you know book is heavier than pen and therefore a stronger stimulus is necessary so in this case brain because of his judgment gives stronger stimulus to the motor nerve it causes stimulation of more number of motor units leading to increase in the force of contraction by which you can lift the book from the desk so this addition of motor units to perform a particular action is called as recruitment of the motor units so stronger is the requirement of generation of force more is the recruitment of the motor units this will continue as long as all the motor units in the muscle can be thrown into action and hence the stimulus at which all the motor units are stimulated is called as maximal stimulus and at maximal stimulus maximum strength of the muscle is produced any further increase in the stimulus strength will not now improve the performance now how many muscle fibers are present in each motor unit this number varies depending upon the function of muscle the muscles which are required for skilled activity will have lesser number of muscle fibers in a motor unit for example your extraocular muscles they are concerned with very skilled activity and hence there are just 3 to 6 muscle fibers in one motor unit similarly your hand muscles or finger muscles they are involved in skilled activity and therefore they have less number of muscle fibers in individual motor unit here is the example of skilled activity this is actually the rangoli drawn by these two persons so to have very fine control over the muscle the number of muscle fibers in a motor unit are less in contrast muscles concerned with gross activity will have more number of muscle fibers in individual motor unit for example your anti gravity muscles the muscles of back or leg they will have hundreds of muscle fibers in a single motor unit now coming to the next property summation summation means addition it is defined as fusion of contraction with repeated stimulation of the muscle the degree by which muscle contractions are fused will depend on the frequency of stimulation when frequency of this repeated successive stimulation is less the muscle contractions occur one after other and there is progressive increase in the force of first few contractions which is termed as staircase phenomenon or trepi the cause for this increase in the force of contraction is increased amount of calcium in the sarcoplasm as well as increase in the temperature of the muscle due to previous contraction this increased temperature reduces viscosity of the sarcoplasm favoring the sliding of actin and myosin 
and it also increases enzymatic activity and thereby the force of muscle contraction. Now, if the frequency of stimulation is increased to a certain extent, we will find that muscle does not get any time to relax in between and all the contractions they choose to produce even a stronger single contraction and the sustained state of contraction due to multiple successive stimulation is called as tetanus and again it is caused due to accumulation of calcium in the sarcoplasm. Now this property also differs in case of skeletal and cardiac muscle. Skeletal muscle can be easily thrown into sustained contraction and therefore we can have sustained contraction whenever there is a need. But sustained contraction is not possible in case of cardiac muscle. Therefore, this property in case of cardiac muscle is called as incomplete tetanus. The reason for this difference in the property of tetanus in skeletal and cardiac muscle is the duration of refractory period. The last property of the skeletal muscle is fatigue. It is defined as reduced or absence of performance due to continuous repeated stimulation. It is temporary phenomenon and it is caused due to exhaustion of neurotransmitters, nutrients, ATP or accumulation of metabolic waste materials in the muscle. Normally in intact animal or human beings, the first site where fatigue sets in is synapses in the central nervous system. To overcome this site of fatigue, motivation plays important role. If the person is motivated, person can continue to do the work for longer time. Usually the second site where fatigue sets in is the muscle itself. An important cause for this is accumulation of metabolic waste products. The last site where fatigue can set in is neuromuscular junction. Again here is a difference in the property shown by skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. Skeletal muscle can easily be fatigued but not the cardiac muscle and again the reason is same the long refractory period. In case of cardiac muscle, the entire systole, the contraction phase and early part of the relaxation phase is refractory period and because of that always cardiac muscle gets some time to relax and therefore they cannot be fatigued. And this is very important property for cardiac muscle because of which they can continue to perform their pumping action maintaining circulation throughout the life. So let us quickly revise the important points we have studied in this session. Skeletal muscle shows the property of excitability, conductivity, contractility, refractory period, all or none law, summation, tetanus and fatigue. Refractory period in case of skeletal muscle is very low and because of that it can show summation, tetanus as well as fatigue. All or none law is obeyed by individual motor units. And because of this gradations in the response is possible in skeletal muscle and which is also necessary to save the energy expenditure on the muscle contraction. So that's all for this session. Thank you. If you enjoy my session, press like button and share it with your friends. If you haven't yet subscribed my channel, subscribe it now and press the bell icon to get further notifications. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.